Good morning, dear students. Today we are going to study about the types of fermenter. The most common uh, fermenters used in industries are the stayed tank fermenter, air lift fermenter, bubble column fermenter, packed bed reactor or fermenter, fluidized bed reactor, batch reactor. The first one is stayed tank fermenter. Stayed tank fermenter, it is otherwise called a stayed tank bioreactor. It consists of a cylindrical vessel with a uh, motor driven central shaft that supports one or more impellers. So it, it is composed of a uh, cylindrical uh, vessel uh, with a central shaft. Shaft means a rod and uh, at the base of the rod one or more impellers are being connected and uh, the motor when the motor uh, rotates the impellers uh, helps to mix uh, air or oxygen into the medium. Here the suspension is stirred continuously by the impeller so that um, the, uh, during this agitation all the compounds in the medium get dispersed to form a homogeneous concentration inside the bioreactor. And this uh, type of uh, stayed tank bioreactors they are used widely for culturing biological agents such as cells, microbial enzymes or antibodies. So, uh, the main use of this stayed tank fermenter is to culture large amount of microbial cells like yeast cells or bacterial cells uh, which are required uh, for us uh, in biotechnological applications or as single cell proteins like that. And they are also used for the production of uh, useful enzymes and antibodies. This is the diagram of a stayed tank uh, fermenter. It's, it's a cylindrical vessel. And at the center of the cylindrical vessel, we can see the shaft. It is connected to the motor at the top and uh, the impeller at the uh, uh, bottom. And this impeller, it is continuously been uh, rotating or agitating so that air and all the uh, dispersed materials get uh, homogeneously mixed in the bioreactor. So uh, it is uh, connected with the uh, cooling jacket because uh, the entire process, mechanical process generate heat. So um, we have to control the excess heat. So a cooling jacket is provided. And um, uh, then uh, this uh, uh, effluence. The effluence means the uh, products that uh, or the, uh, the culture medium itself can be an effluent. So uh, whatever material we want to take out from the bioreactor, it can be considered as an effluent. So the effluent is being collected uh, mainly for the product extraction and it is being given to the distillation unit for the extraction of the product. Then influent means uh, the uh, micro, the inoculum, the media, everything are influent. What are, whatever we are feeding into the bioreactor is an influent and whatever we are taking out from the bioreactor is an effluent. So that is all about the stayed tank fermenter. Next is airlift fermenter. Airlift fermenter, it is a type of pneumatic uh, fermenter. It uses fluid, either air or liquid, uh, which causes the upward motion resulting in the circulatory flow in the end um, bioreactor. So, in airlift fermenter, we are using either air or liquid uh, for the circulatory uh, motion of materials inside the bioreactor. The fermenter, it is divided into two different zones uh, uh, by means of a baffle or a draft tube and the two zones are interconnected and the first zone is called a riser zone into which the air is pumped up and the second zone is called a downcomer zone as the name suggests. The solution comes down in this uh, zone and there is no um, pumping up of air in this zone. And the turbulence caused by the fluid uh, it ensures the mixing of the liquid without any mechanical stirring arrangements for mixing. So in airlift fermenter, the mixing is caused by the action of both the liquid and the uh, air that is the fluid uh, component and uh, here, they, uh, here there is no uh, apparatus for mixing the solution. Only the action of this uh, fluid uh, that is responsible for mixing the end air components within the bioreactor. So that is the peculiarity of airlift fermenter. 
then uh, the density of the gas liquid dispersion in the gas parger riser zone tends to be lower than the bulk density in the downcomer zone that means the density uh, in the riser zone it is lower than that of the density in the downcomer zone because in the uh, riser zone uh, gas is already been fed up and liquid is there and so the gas and liquid dispersion it is having lower density when compared to that of the density of the liquid alone in the downcomer zone so what happens is that because of this uh, lower density in the uh, uh, riser zone uh, the uh, liquid from the um, uh, downcomer zone it, it will uh, flow down mm, as a result the dispersion flow up in the riser zone and a down flow occurs in the downcomer zone so in, so in the downcomer zone downflow occurs and in the riser zone uh, what happens is that the uh, rate of uh, fluid flow that is both the liquid and gas flow will be very high so a dispersion flow ups in the riser zone and a downflow occurs in the downcomer zone and this performance of this air lift fermenter it will depend upon the injection rate of the uh, gas and uh, the resulting rate of liquid circulation and uh, the uh, rate of liquid circulation increases with the square root of height of the air lift device the advantage of air lift fermenter is that it is highly energy efficient because uh, the, the liquid and uh, air uh, velocities will be low so uh, energy consumption uh, is very low so it is a highly energy efficient reactor and uh, the heat and mass transfer capacity are also very high and it can be used for both free as well as immobilized cell free cell means the cells seen dispersed in the medium and immobilized cell mean uh, cells means the cells which are attached to a specific substrate so uh, this air lift fermenters they are uh, suitable for both free microbes as well as immobilized uh, cells and it is uh, used in large scale manufacture of pharmaceutical proteins as well as for the production of single cell proteins methanol production and sewage water treatments and it is suited for aerobic cultures and uh, it is uh, when compared to that of uh, the stair tank reactors uh, they, they produce less amount of heat because of the absence of mechanical agitation so these were some of the, some of the advantages of air lift fermenter air lift fermenter the first major, major advantage is that it is highly energy efficient second one is that it can be used for both free and immobilized cell and it, uh, it is commercially uh, used for the production of uh, single cell proteins uh, then um, pharmaceutical proteins then methanol production sewage waste water treatment and uh, the other advantage is that it uh, it is suited for aerobic cultures and also it produces less amount of heat because of the absence of mechanical agitation this is the diagram of a air lift fermenter you have to concentrate only on the third uh, diagram in the third diagram we can see that the fermenter it is being divided into two uh, different zones by means of a central white portion that central white portion act as the baffle and but these two zones are interconnected okay and the uh, right uh, zone it is been uh, having a darker color uh, it is the downcomer zone and the um, left uh, zone it is been a pale colored and it is the riser zone and uh, to the into the riser zone the gas input is been given and uh, when the ga uh, gas is fed up um, the solution from the uh, downcomer zone it comes down the arrow mark is given uh, downward it uh, comes down and it will mm, the uh, solution inside the uh, uh, um, riser zone will soon get raised so this is the uh, diagram of air lift fermenter next is bubble column fermenter bubble column fermenter it is also a cylindrical fermenter with a height uh, to diameter ratio 4 is to 6 here gas is parged at the base of the column through perforated plates or perforated pipes or through uh, metal uh, microporous parges 
and here uh, the no mechanically stayed for uh, our devices are there for gas supply and this type of fermenter was mainly used for uh, citric acid production so uh, bubble column fermenter bubble column fermenter it is uh, having a cylindrical shape and uh, uh, the bubble column uh, column uh, like um, uh, uh, central portion and at the sen and the bottom of the column uh, there are uh, spargers are placed which is either in the form of perforated plates or perforated pipes or uh, spargers which helps to mix the air and uh, um, it is uh, there is no other mechanical devices for uh, uh, giving the air and uh, this uh, bubble column fermenter it is having a limited application it is used for the production of citric acid and this is the uh, picture of a bubble column fermenter and uh, here it is a cylindrical uh, vessel and at the base of the vessel we can see the sparger with the perforated holes it is a metal strip it is having a perforated holes and through this uh, the gas is been fed and uh, the bubbles were formed inside the um, uh, liquid part and uh, this uh, one type of fermenter it is mainly used for the production of citric acid next is packed bed reactor a solid matrix inoculated with the microorganisms are packed in the column so in uh, packed bed reactor there is a column or a cylinder which is packed with some solid materials these solid materials can support the growth of microorganisms so these solid materials are then mixed with or inoculated with the microorganisms and this microorganisms they are otherwise called immobilized biocatalysts because they are been uh, fitted or they are been fixed into the solid substrate so they are immobilized they get attached it into the solid uh, substance and this solid substance are packed like a bed so these uh, reactors are called packed bed reactors and this immobilized biocatalyst that means the immobilized microorganism packed in the column they are fed with the nutrients either from the top of the column or from the bottom of the column then the nutrient broth that is the nutrients that are uh, used for feeding the microorganism along with the substrate that means the substrate which we want to convert it into the product is passed over the immobilized myocatalyst packed in the column which will convert it into the suitable product then the product is removed from the solution and the solution can be recycled and uh, the biocatalyst can be either enzymes or microbes so uh, this packed bed bioreactors they are mainly used for the uh, production of acetic acid and they are also uh, used for the uh, wastewater treatment plants so uh, i will explain you have to study uh, both these things that is wastewater treatment plant and acetic acid production so we will uh, uh, ex explain in detail this packed bed reactor at that section so that is all about the packed bed reactor fluidized bed reactor here are the difference between the solid or the packed bed reactor and this fluidized bed reactor is that in packed bed reactor we are using uh, the solid as the pack package material inside the column but here we are using uh, along with the solid we are using gas and liquid so it is called a gas liquid solid fluid bed for, so the bed is composed of gas liquid and solid and uh, the gas is been sparged into the uh, suspension by means of some sparger and the design of the reactor is uh, such that the solid would retain in the reactor and the liquid will be eluted out so after each uh, fermentation uh, process is complete the solid will uh, remain in the fermenter and the liquid will be eluted out for the separation of the product advantage of this bioreactor is that it would allow better mixing of particle than uniform temperature gradient and operate continuously so that is all about the fluidized bed reactor and this is the diagram of the fluidized bed reactor and here uh, 
Uh, the gas is being fed into the reactor uh, from the lower side and spargers are there which hollow the which is a perforated plate and in uh, through the perforations the gas will be uh, moving upward uh, into the fermenter and the excess gas will come uh, on the come out from the top of the fermenter and solid uh, it will be retained in the fermenter but uh, in this diagram the solid is uh, being seen as uh, being uh, giving out of the fermenter so, so instead of solid you have to mark their liquid liquid is being eluted from the fermenter uh, solid is being retained in the fluidized bed reactors and the last one is batch reactor it is the classic bioreactor uh, with the, all the basic facilities of a fermenter that, that is it is the most commonly used industrial fermenter it is having the aerator agitator ph control temperature control bio sensors are there to measure all the variations and inlet uh, uh, is there for uh, sample uh, uh, sample as well as nutrient uh, in uh, in giving and then sample outlets are there and jackets uh, cooling as well as heating jackets everything are there in this type of uh, reactor and these reactors are widely used for batch process uh, batch wise fermentation is allowed and after uh, completion of a one batch of fermentation the product formed is being extracted and the fermenter is cleaned and the next batch would start again so this is the batch reactor so it is the it is the uh, um, classic type or the conventional type of uh, fermenter in which most of the industrial or commercial products are being produced and it is having uh, the basic features of a common fermenter having all the uh, units for controlling the ph temperature uh, then pressure uh, then uh, inlet outlet uh, all everything are there and it is called a batch fermenter because batch phase fermentation is taking place after um, uh, a complete uh, batch is been operated and the product is been extracted we are giving fresh uh, it is cleaned and we are giving the fresh sample and introducing the fresh inoculum into the medium and the process is repeated so uh, this is a batch reactor with all the uh, the basic design of a fermenter so that is all for today's class thank you